Steve Peterson here with Infinity Investments and welcome to our channel where we talk all things commercial and investment property. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to completely screw up a deal, particularly a 1031 exchange, even when you do everything right. That's right. Look, sometimes things happen in this business and even when you do the right things, uh, a deal can blow up. All right. And the reason I'm putting this content out there is to make you ever vigilant and diligent about staying on top of all the details within your deal because sometimes things just get a little bit crazy. And I want to talk to you about that because, okay, when we talk about doing a 1031 exchange and we've got a whole checklist that we, we've created about 1031 exchange and a series of videos on this topic, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of moving parts. And you really have to be dialed in and focused to make this thing happen. However, because there's so many moving parts, one of them goes left, one of them goes right at the wrong time, a deal can blow up. That's why it's very important for you to have the right team of people that you're working with as an investor, as you're going out seeking to expand your portfolio, doing these 1031 exchanges, all right? And so a good way to really kind of screw up a deal is to be reliant upon only one property. Now, this comes up, this actually happens a lot. When you sell your pro your uh, down leg, or what's called your relinquished property, the property you own, you go out and sell it. Now, you're, you engage a 1031 exchange, a common area, um, a QI, qualified intermediary, and now they're handling your 1031. You got a 45 day period of time in which you have to identify your replacement property. Too often, people will put all their eggs in one basket and say, hey, look, I'm in contact on this property. I love this property. We've done the due diligence. We are buying this property. There's nothing stopping us on this. We're going after this property. That's all good. That's all fine and dandy. What happens, though, if something happens or goes haywire with the deal and you can't close it, and now you don't have any other replacement properties, in which you can go back to. I had a situation in circumstance, give you an example, on a property that we, uh, my clients sold a building, they were doing a 1031 exchange. We had, we had originally three properties that we identified and they zeroed in on one. And they said, the other ones, you know what, we just don't want them. We were in contract and we backed out of those deals. And I, my thought was, look, why don't we keep these properties in contract until we are 100% sure that this other deal is gonna go through. And they didn't really want to do that because sometimes you have to keep a property in contract. You have to continue with the due diligence period. You may have to put up an increased amount of a deposit, but it would have ended up being a wise decision because the property that we had zeroed in on that we knew we wanted that actually was a great deal didn't appraise. And it didn't appraise by a lot, by like 600 grand. Now the appraisal was full of it and totally did a horrible job. We contested the appraisal. We showed comps, we showed cap rate. We showed all of that. We showed the income, uh, uh, you know, the debt coverage ratio was well over, you know, what the appraiser stated. They discounted our income by 25%, um, stating that the neighborhood or the area was, you know, below the poverty line. And somehow they felt like they could discount our income, the actual income, not the projected or pro forma income. The actual income, they discounted by 25%. They used the cap rate from somewhere in the middle of the country, not in Northern California. And so the, the bottom line is the property didn't appraise. Well, the property didn't appraise kind of put us in a tight spot because at that point we had backed out of the other two uh, options against what I was saying, but you know, you got to work with the clients and what they want. The lesson from that that I take and I take, took from that that I want to impart to you is to keep your options open as much as you possibly can without going non-refundable with your deposit. Now that is understandable. If, if, if you're looking at some backup properties and they're saying, look, if you want to move forward with this, you need to put up non-refundable money and you know you really don't want to go with that one that's kind of a backup, then you got a decision to make. But what I'm telling you is don't put your eggs in one basket. Now, another client asked me um, recently, they're for surely, um, we're, we're in contract on this property that they're, they're exchanging into, 
And we're like 99.99999 times short that we're going to close that deal. However, I still advised him. He said, hey, do you think it makes sense to put a couple backups? I said, absolutely. Absolutely. You should put some backups in there. And, and I'm saying this because I've been through the situation that I just explained to you guys. You don't want to be stuck and only have a one property when you can identify up to three. And if you use this, the 200% where we can identify more than that, right? But the bottom line is give yourself some options. The next thing to talk about is finance. My previous example where I said it didn't appraise was more so about the appraiser being an absolute idiot. But sometimes in a deal, especially recently, you can get lenders who are complete idiots. Or just look at the end of the day, maybe they're having some problems in their own portfolio. Or maybe they decide they don't like you or they don't like the property in the middle of the escrow. Right, and I had this last year. It wasn't an exchange, but the listing I was selling, we were weeks away from close, and the lender just came in and decided, you know what, we're gonna drop the loan amount on you guys. We're gonna go from sixty-five percent LTV. We're gonna go to fifty-five percent, and just because that's what we lender, that's what we're gonna do. You can imagine that put the buyer in a tough spot. So luckily, I was able to, as a listing agent, work with him, work with the sellers. We worked it out, and they went. They found a new lender, and they worked it out, and they closed it. Now. I was a listing agent. I was understanding. I was a positive problem solver. A lot of listing agents, they're not so understanding and they're not positive problem solvers. they just like, hey, you guys said you were going to close on this day. It ain't happening. I got three people with backup position. One of them is my client. You're out of here. So let's say they do that on you. Um, that, could be, that could be bad if you don't have backups. Or if you don't have a backup lender that you can ease in there really quickly. Now, you gotta have some finesse with this because lenders hate to be shopped. By the way, investors, this is a big mistake that a lot of you guys make. You go and take your loan out to 10 different brokers, 10 different lenders before the deal, and then they all know each other, by the way. Commercial real estate is a small world. And then they're like, hey, this guy out here shopping the loan, you know, we don't like that. And they don't like that. Now, you gotta take that with a grain of salt because you do gotta keep lenders honest by having a couple different options. What I'm saying is have some finesse with it. All right, and some, some respect. Don't just have, have a million people looking at your loan and then they all know each other and then you're just, you don't really care about them. They see through that and maybe none of them want to do your deal. Or the only way you kind of get away with that is you've got a bunch of money in the bank and a bunch of proper properties in there but to, to, to work with you. But what you want to do is have a primary lender and have a backup lender and have the backup lender know that, hey, look, I'm going with this primary loan, but what can you do for me in case this thing blows up? And that's an excellent thing you need to do in a 1031 exchange because it's time sensitive. You get in the escrow, you got your, you got 180 days to close. Now it should be enough time to close, but you may not have that leeway with the seller. So you need to have a backup option that you can smoothly and efficiently and quickly move them into the deal ASAP fast. And the last piece I want to say about screwing up a deal even when you do everything right is staying on top of all the details within the escrow so that you don't miss anything, you don't miss a contingency date, you don't, you don't make some, some weird mistake even though you've done everything the right way. Because we've all been there. If you've been in the business long enough, you've been in a deal where you felt like you did everything right and then something went crazy. And here's the one thing. Sometimes they do. And you got your eye your you, you got to have your balanced mind, your focus, and really be dialed in to understand that, that this 1031 exchange process is a difficult process. You have to have a good team around you. If you're an investor, you got to have brokers, agents, accountants, lenders, people that are rocking with you. If you're a broker, you have to have a good team of other agents that you, you have on your team searching for deals. You got to be working with a really good exchange intermediary, a really good title company, loan brokers. That's the message that I'm trying to put to you guys is that Let's try to do not just everything we can do, but let's look for the hidden uh, landmines that can blow up this deal, head them off at the pass, and make sure this exchange that we're doing for this client, or this deal we're doing for this client, or the deal or exchange we're doing for ourselves, goes right, and we get what we want. So I hope this video is helpful. I uh, wish you the best of success in your investing career. Like, subscribe, share with somebody, and to the next video, best of success to you, and peace out.